Alright, so here we go. I um, apologize for the video starting in turn 2 play. Or turn 3, sorry. But uh, he's got a Brutalist on the board, drops Infernal Gargoyle. I have an Evil Ascendant down and a Bazaar. I had a turn 2 Bazaar and a turn 3 Evil Ascendant. As you can see in my hand, I have two Crescendos. Speed Strike, but I'm going to get rid of it because I don't have any wet big teeth in my hand as of yet. <laughs> you can see that I'm contemplating saving that Now You're Mine for that Gargoyle, or using it on that Gargoyle, sorry. And seeing as there's only one damage from the Brutalist, I'm not going to worry about using Moonstalker's ability to negate that. Alright, my G is now up to four resources and drops a portal. So now I'm instantly thinking that there's a plasma behemoth or something of the sort um, coming for me for the very next round. As you can see, I drew a uh, Shadow Knight. That's an addition that I put into this deck. I went into this particularly particular match. Um, with a 56 card deck, I went with a fat Moonstalker mail deck and I added a few of these cards because I figured uh, I could play a different strat here. I will, the optimal um, plan here is to, pardon me, the optimal plan, I lost myself here, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, is to get all those looping on each other, like, and I could do that, I could slowly waste them. Like, I could play it right now if I really wanted to, and sacrifice them to death. However, there's no need right now. Um, if I'm going to play it like that and resurrect them later on in the game, what I'm going to do is play them when I feel that I'm going to need to divert some burn from Moonstalker. That's the joy of playing a mage. I'm very reluctant to sacrifice this uh, regeneration that's sitting in my hand. He just played another Gargoyle. As you can see, I have two Crescendos in my hand, a Shadow Font, What Big Teeth, a Regeneration, and a Shadow Knight. But as much as I don't like to, um, I want to play all of those things soon. So. I already got rid of one of those crescendos, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's why I decided to get rid of the heal, the regeneration. Even though I really hate to get rid of that uh, fighting a mage, I did it. I finished that brutalist myself. No particular reason. Just did. Sometimes you gotta do that. With this deck, you got to keep in mind that you don't have anything else other than um, Evil Ascendant to beat down some damage out of these guys and Crescendo if you have it out. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still very sick. As you can see, he uh, hit me with Shadow Knight with that portal. I do have Load Wolf on now, though. So I will negate some of that damage, not all. That is for sure. Alright, so I have Bazaar out, and I just drew a bad Santa. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to need the bad Santa draw for now. So I'll most likely sacrifice that. Again, he has a Shadow Knight and a Gargoyle out on the field. I've cast my Rain Delay. I did not sacrifice my Bad Santa. Instead, I played it. And now I will start the slow grind on Magia. There's the first hit on that hero. Any type of item destruction within this uh, an opponent's deck is 
don't get me wrong, it throws a, a wrench in my spokes. However, there's so much items to be destroyed in this deck that it makes it almost impossible unless the opponent is running as many item destructions as they have, like uh, as they possibly can. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to play a crescendo now. See the joy about the crescendo is it sometimes forces people to play a little bit differently than what they normally would. They won't drop that big fatty, or, um, you know, unless they they know they can take care of that, or if they don't have enough. And especially with Moonstalker, if they don't have enough allies out on the board to take care of the six durability on the crescendo, uh, with Moonstalker's ability, he could instantly. Uh, well, the way I like to play it is only play Crescendo when you have the shadow energy to use Moonstalker's ability. This way you can guarantee get past the minimal minimal one uh, defense that it has on the first round and you're guaranteed to have at least two defense for the next round which is actually quite good for most units. Most units won't be able to hurt you very much with two defense. Provided that serves no protection whatsoever versus uh, any type of spell casting or plasma behemoth abilities or anything like that. As you see, I now have all four of my Shadow Knights ready to start my loop now. Um, just going to skip the sacrifice this round because I really don't want to get rid of Shadow Font or any of those allies. So I'm going to use Shadow Font and Speed Strike here. And I might just eat the two damage, I'm not entirely sure. But no, I won't because he has a portal out. So I don't want to chance him dropping another Shadow Knight or something like that that's going to smack me very hard. So now I start attacking him twice because I have Speed Strike on. Which I know it doesn't seem like much damage every round, too. But it is um, significant. It really makes the difference in this type of deck and this style of play. As you can see he still has the portal out so I used my shadow font so I could use my ability yet again to pretty much negate the effects of his portal if he's about to drop any fatties. As you can see now he's dropped a Snow Sapphire, which is what I was looking for in the original thread where I posted about this deck. Um, the Snow Sapphire is what I was referring to. That is probably the uh, worst armor for Moonstalker to have to deal with, because again, like I said earlier, uh, you don't have allies really to take care of this in a typical deck. Like I threw those in there because I thought it would be nice to loop it when I don't need uh, when I don't need to worry about heals or divert some damage to them. But uh, again, typically you have only Moonstalker to take care of this. So you gotta use Moonstalker's ability so you don't get hit that round and have something to cover you for the next round while you're frozen. Uh, luckily with this deck it's completely possible. Uh, you have enough delay between full moons and rain delays etc to to uh, keep Moonstalker uh, out of harm's way for the better part. So as you can see, I'm still debating, but uh, yeah, I have to take care of it, so that's that. My Moonstalker is now frozen with his ability. I believe with his ability. I'm not entirely sure if I used it there actually. But optimally would be with his ability. The ability so you could save your ass the next round. As we can see here, I'm going to use Full Moon to negate some damage. Oh god. Sorry. 
really. I wasn't paying any attention. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to negate some damage with that uh, full moon. But I made the vital mistake here, and uh, I'll make, I'll point it out right here. I used full moon along with crescendo. Now, given there's not many allies here out on the board, so I had to do what I did. Um, my crescendo won't take too much of a durability hit. However, it does not. Uh, prevent Crescendo from taking durability damage when full moon's out, so I pretty much just wasted a full moon there is what happened. One thing I really did was stop him from using any burn on me. Uh, that being said, I don't necessarily think it was a bad move. Let's see, he took away my uh, Crescendo armor with the Leyline Nexus, so it kind of worked out for the best. Alright, so at this point, I would like to try and negate some damage here. So, I'm going to uh, use this along with my ability. And this way here, I'm guaranteed to get the first armor off of it. And next round, even if I couldn't use my ability, that gargoyle with two attack would not be able to physically hurt me. So now with my ability in play, I uh, I could avoid this attack, and I have a full moon for the next round. So therefore, being frozen doesn't really hurt me like it does. Don't get me wrong; it slows me down, but it's it's not the end of the world in this scenario. <laughs> you have to pardon my coughing and sniffling. I am still extremely ill. I just wanted to get this done. And there he goes playing Dagger of Unmaking. Blasting me with a fireball. And uh, pulling a card with Tome of Knowledge. Now up to this point I haven't given him any chance to use his hero's ability. Uh, I feel I don't need the bad Santa now so it's gone. And I could start to uh, I could start to divert some damage here, which is what I'm going to do, but uh, perhaps this wasn't the best approach. I should not have used uh, that full moon while dropping that guy right there. I should have waited, actually. But uh, there was nothing I could do at that point in time because I was frozen and I didn't pull anything else. I could have possibly used the bad Santa, which would have been a different approach, and hope for some other type of stall, like a rain delay and potentially saved my full moon but uh, I'm not sure that I had the bad sense of that anyways, besides the point so my ultimate goal here is actually working diverting a little bit even though he's using his ability arm that's fine because as you can see I have three more in my hand and I plan on diverting as much as I can from this He summons a Death Mage Thaddeus. <laughs> now he's up to 11 resources here. I'm sitting at 9. And again, I played my uh, Full Moon along with my Crescendo. However, my Crescendo still had a ass load of durability to endure his two hits here. So uh, I'm about halfway through my deck. And uh, to be honest, things couldn't be going much better for me. I'm surprised he didn't use that. He just uh, threatens me with it, and that's all. And that's that. And there's a rain delay for me. And the 
know some people will argue that Rainbow is a useless card, however, in this build, this particular deck, it's, uh, I don't know, it's pretty valuable to me. Now there we go, you can see the start of the loop here, beginning. I've already pulled um, my Shadow Knight from the dead. I don't have to worry about his allies attacking me other than this death mage so what I'll do is I'll take the two hit points off him and it'll be dead the next round I'll take the two damage right now from him and uh, it saves me four damage in the long run it saves me two more rounds three more rounds whatever it is with him in play so that was my logic behind that choice <laughs> Alright, you can see he's getting desperate now. He's going to start using everything he's got uh, to desperately try and put an end to this. He has to hurry up this race. To be honest, he needs to focus more on me. But I'm doing a good job right now by deterring him from hitting me and taking care of these guys that could smack him around for 5 damage per hit. We can see the fireballs coming. Everything he's got, he's realized now that this is uh, do or die. At this point in time, I'd really appreciate a regeneration. Uh, I don't really feel comfortable getting rid of any of those, so. And the crescendo is about to have um, five, and once it gets to five, all the enemies blow up. So I'm pretty much relying on that. As you can see he's got four durability, and uh, as is, he cannot. Uh, well, he can physically take it away from me if he hit me with all of his allies and his dagger. So I'm going to use my ability so that doesn't happen. Also this ability should keep my uh, Shadow Knight in play. At least one of them. That is the overall tentative goal. As you can see I played this one um, very much so on the hopes of pulling a delay card on the next draw because I'm now frozen I've used my ability and as of the next turn I'm completely vulnerable and as it stands I have no any type of delay card whatsoever within my hand I've captured prey, I have an armor, I have a backup weapon just in case he uses um, that acid, acid weapon whatever it was there and that's basically it. So, by also uh, by letting these Shadow Knights out to play, other than just draw his fire, I am also giving him uh, the ability to use the Shadow Energy to start pulling those cards. And I know that sounds funny, but if you look at the numbers right now and the goal of this deck, I almost have him completely uh, depleted of cards, which is where the damage really starts to happen. So this doesn't bother me any to let him use his shadow ability on my allies, which I will just continually, continuously rest from the graveyard. So I drew a bad Santa. Um, I really need some type of delay. So I'm going to sacrifice this now you're mine. This brutal minotaur here is going to go down. That's just what's going to happen. I could use Captured Prey on him, but uh, I'd rather give him the 2 damage and just kill him. Well, that was a silly play if you ask me, but... You know, that could have been done with a portal. But Alright, so I used that, my bad Santa, and luckily enough... Um, I have myself a full moon. Now, although this won't save my durability for my armor, uh, 
this combined with captured prey will. If I kill one of these guys, because I can't do anything with my hero, I can't kill that, uh, I can't kill that wolf, I can't do anything. So I'll use captured prey on a guy I can't hurt for one damage every round. And also he cannot take a durability from me. So we should be good to have everyone blow up. Oh, see, I already messed up. I didn't even need to use that captured prey. I could have just ended my turn and watched everyone die because my crescendo had five defense. So there's a new mistake by me. <laughs> I could have kept that captured prey, but instead I wasted it. I can imagine there's going to be a bunch of people that say, you know, I would have did this this way and that that way. And again, uh, I'm not saying my way is the way to go at all, that's for sure, because I've been out of the game for a long time, but uh, this deck was up to 56 cards, no real intents on winning. This deck can't really go um, fire in the rating competitively as is, because it's a 56 card deck, slightly tuned, I could do a lot better, I have faith in it, but it's just overall a fun deck to play for me. Now, I know a lot of people, this is not their style, too long of a game, etc, etc, etc. Maybe even too cheap of a style. However, this is a strategy that is available for Moonstalker, and it's a good one. It's hard to fight. It's If you don't expect it, and uh, you know, you're not willing to put all your burn onto the hero, and pretty much ignore the rest, um, strategically plot out your moves, because, I mean... There's things that just absolutely have to go when you start fighting these kinds of things, these kind of decks. And uh, again, I, I firmly believe that a more refined deck, maybe more something, not exactly the deck that I posted originally, but something along that line, could do a little bit better competitively. This one here, again, I had 56, I believe, cards in the deck, and uh, no real intention on making this work. 100% like but uh, it's still something that you'd have to be careful with uh, as you can clearly tell right here I just went against 40 deck uh, Magia I didn't see a supernova though which surprised me I really expected to see at least one if not two so uh, yeah you know it, it works out That brutal minotaur is just sitting there, not able to do anything. So, uh, and as of now, um, Magia is going to be taking some damage every turn. Dropped portal at the end. I'm not even sure why he would have that at this point. Like, really, what are you going to do with the portal right now? Moonstalkers use his ability, so whatever you're going to haste out there is going to be able to hit anything. Even if you're laying the ground for next round, it's a little bit late when you have five cards left in your hand and nothing in your deck. That probably would have just been a sacrifice card for me, but whatever. Alright, so, took his time, but didn't have anything to do. I luckily got myself a regen here. And I want to be able to use that, because uh, if he has any burn left in his hand, which he probably does, I want to be able to be as uh, strong as possible to be able to possibly, uh, you know, survive it. That's the whole goal there. Use my full moon because my crescendo is pretty much at full durability. And uh, I'm just going to put this guy on hold so he doesn't attack me for now. And seeing as I have the extra damage, I really want to attack her. So that's what's going to happen here. You see, the full moon puts an extra plus two damage onto your allies while they're out on the board, making this little combo here with the Shadow Knights that much more devastating. That's seven damage if I. If this would have been one more round, I could have had two more Shadow Knights out and just annihilated her right there. But, uh, you know, unfortunately I had to uh, negate that six damage that that 
brutal minotaurs able to do. So I had to use the full moon pattern there. And there's the rage quit. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments are welcome. As you can see, uh, my ratings low. It's because I use ridiculous decks.